he, he uses the world's systems to infiltrate and affect us globally, worldwide, so it can be locally or community-wide. It's a wide array of systems that the enemy uses called the world to infect us locally and communally. Name the entity, industry, or institution, and Satan is doing his best to have his system in it. I'm going to say that again. Name the entity, the industry, or the institution, and Satan is doing his best to have a system in it. And if he has a system in it, he wants to keep the system in it. So whatever Satan does to your body, he's truly doing to your mind. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Whatever he does to your marriage, he's actually doing to your mind. Whatever he does to your finances, he's actually doing to your mind. If he does it to your children, if he does it to a school, if he does it to your neighbor, if he do it to your car, he's really doing it to your mind. Renewing our minds help us to prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So I'm going to explain how to renew your mind by explaining how not to renew your mind. You don't renew your mind by doing the same thing you've been doing. Amen! Oh my God. Oh my God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might well that's verse 10 put on the whole arm of God you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places amen you may be seated in the house of the Lord God bless you again Pastor Saints amen phenomenal Phenomenal. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's a beautiful queen. Excellent help made and help me. I pray y'all been blessed through our, our Kingdom War series. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. The ultimate, the ultimate desire that God has truly given me in this particular moment is to exalt God, but also expose the devil. Amen. While equipping and enforcing the church to be what the God has equipped and enforced us to be. Again, it's, it's impossible. It will be impossible for me to cover everything in the spiritual warfare series. Because it will take the rest of my life to be able to cover all of these bases. So I'm asking y'all to show me some grace in these particular five portions of our series. That the little bit that God blesses me to give. Trust me, I got more. But I'm going to give you so much. First lesson in our series, we talked about knowing your enemy. That pertains to intelligence. The second lesson, which was last week, was the eternal battle. That pertains to the spiritual battle that we go through. Today, we'll highlight the earthly battle or the worldly battle. And I don't mean like World War One, Two, Three, and stuff like that. That plays a part, but that's not what I mean. I mean the world in regards to the systems and the strategies of the devil. Fourth, we'll talk about the internal battle, which is the battle within, and also knowing your God, which is intimacy. That pertains to intimacy. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, as well as verses 6 through 7. Because time is fleeing and the Lord has truly been blessing us, I, I'm going to take my time, but I'm going to ask y'all to, you know, help me out a little bit. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, also verses 6 through 7 says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verses 6 through 7. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. The worldly battle has its earthly origins in the Garden of Eden. The things we've been discussing is that we saw that in the spiritual realm where Satan was banished from heaven onto earth. That's the spiritual war. But it has its earthly origins in the Garden of Eden. That's where it begins to affect and affect us. We see that this battle started in the Garden of Eden, and it started with something called sin. Sin, this little three-letter word that has big ramifications. Sin, y'all ever heard of that? Sin. sin. It started with something that was sinful, and sin is simply missing the mark. By disobeying God. You, you can try to Greek it. You can Hebrew it. it. It simply means just disobeying God. 
This sin started with something appealing, appetizing, and alluring. Notice that what the serpent did was he brought that he brought to Eve the opportunity to start looking and gazing at a piece of fruit. Something appealing, something appetizing, but also alluring. But the issue is it wasn't so much about the fruit as much as it was about power. Yeah. He told them, he said, God knows that in the day that you eat of it, you're going to be like him. So it wasn't so much the appealing, the appetizing, and the alluring of the fruit as much as it was about having the same power that God had. Which teaches us the important principle about sin, that sin wants you to have the power of God. Not realizing that it's doing it in an underhanded way. Because the only way that we can possess the power of God is by way of the Holy Spirit. So he, he, says, this to this, he says this to Eve. He says, has God not said it? Has God said he, he He removes intentionally the word Lord. In Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, you'll see the Lord God, the Lord God, the Lord God. Throughout the whole text, you'll see the Lord God. But in Genesis chapter 3, Satan removes Lord and just leaves God. Because Lord denotes ownership. He, he removed Lord because if we don't have a Lord over our life, then we don't have an owner. Which means that we are responsible to ourselves and for ourselves. Subsequently, or dare I say consequently, making Satan our Lord. So he was intentional with removing the Lord God. I mean, Genesis 3 and 1 started off, right? Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. But when, the, when Satan opened his mouth, he removes Lord intentionally. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So now he wants to leave us with creator and not lordship. Uh -huh. The removal of the word Lord was ser say, serpent, the, say, uh, the serpent's intentional vocabulary action. Uh -huh. Because if he can remove the purpose of a head, then he can ensure that we are dead. Right. Now, the sin wasn't in the fruit, but in disobedience. Remember, nothing in the spiritual realm is small. Everything in the spirit realm matters. So what Satan did, did was he brought an outside of God influence that brought an outside of God infection. An outside of God influence, because there was nothing wrong with the fruit. The fruit, right, right, right. The fruit was innocent. You know, what's problematic about this text is that the tree of life was also in the garden. God said, you can eat of that. But man want to be smart rather than live forever. So instead of having life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the one that they bit from. Because we, we think we're smarter than God sometimes. We think we can outsmart God. We don't think it takes as much as it's supposed to take for us to be holy. We don't, think it's, we don't think it takes as much as it takes for us to actually be saved. So what we try to do is outsmart the devil. I'm glad you got quiet. <laughs> because none of us are smarter than him. Now the fruit was a form of earthly material, but of spiritual substance. In other words, God was testing them to show would they trust him or trust themselves. And Satan knew that. So many of the things that we go through in life are tests from God while temptations from the enemy to see who are you going to serve. In chapter 3, verses 14 through 19, we see that God renders judgment in the order of rank by way of authority. The first person he gives judgment to is the Satan or the servant. He's third place. The second person is Eve, the woman. She's second place. And lastly, who's first would be Adam, the man. He's first place. Now, when I say in order of authority, I mean as people, we are equal, ladies. But in position, men are the head. Men lead. As people, we are equal. But in position, men have headship. Which is why it's important that women, you allow us men to lead. And don't fight our headship. Because when you're fighting our headship, you're actually doing Satan's work. Selah. <laughs> but notice this. Notice that mankind has authority over Satan. Both man and woman are above Satan. Which is how it's originally supposed to be. So both man and woman are always supposed to execute, execute authority over the enemy. However, it's right here in the Garden of Eden where man got the authority snatched from him. Authority was stolen from man in the Garden of Eden. So now everything's become reversed. And because now we see that the, 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 the devil has authority on earth, he now becomes the God of it. 
Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. I want to highlight verse 4. I said this is the first service, I'm echoing. 2 Corinthians is one of my favorite books. It's one of the most overlooked and underrated books in the Bible. If you have not read 2 Corinthians, I'm encouraging you to read 2 Corinthians. I guarantee you, you're going to be blessed. This is what he says. He says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Satan is the God of this age and this world. Satan, the moment authority was transferred over to him, he became the God of this, this realm. Mm -hmm. Satan running. This is not our world. This ain't your world, squirrel. <laughs> no, it's Satan's world. He's the God of it. Now listen to this. Because he's the God of this world, he has power over this world. Mm -hmm. Meaning anyone not in Christ, he is capable of doing almost anything to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all not listening. Anyone that is not a believer, yeah. Satan, apart from God's allotment, is capable of doing anything he wants to do because he's the God of this realm. Yeah. So that's why you don't get shocked or surprised when people do things that you don't think they should do. If they're not a believer, they get not strange. Right. Because Satan is the God of this world, he is the puppet master, and they are on his strings. Uh -huh. He can only do as much as God will allow him. However, God can still give him leeway to do it because he's the God of this age. He's the God of this realm. So in the, in the Garden of Eden, man lost authority. We see now Satan takes up authority and becomes the ruler, the Elohim of earth. That's scary to me. That's, that's very scary to me. Yes. This is why the world teaches us not to fool with worldliness. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Anyone that is of this world is subject to Satan's control. Uh -huh. You may think you can handle it, but you're subject to his control. Uh -huh. He can puppet master you and right. puppeteer you right. and cause you to do what you don't think you should be doing. Have you, have, I remember before, I, before God saved me, I was starting to lose my mind. I told my queen, I said, the streets do something to us. Uh, the, the streets hug us. They make us, they put us in a bad way. Uh, you don't believe nobody. You don't trust nobody. Uh, it, it just perverts us. It convolutes us. And I was starting to lose my mind. I'm, sit, I'm sitting in the house thinking my mom and dad them against me. The streets do something to you. Because the God of this age is subject to do whatever he wants to do with you, yeah. apart from that which God says he can't do. Yeah. You're subject to his control. But notice the text says Satan has blinded the minds of this world. Uh -huh. Satan blinds the world from receiving the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. So many of us wear shades. Some of us wear shades to look cool. While some of us wear shades just to keep the sun out of our eyes. What's your, way? What's your reason why you wear them? Keep wearing them, I guess. Uh, but the reason why the shades are so important is because they block the, the rays or the, the strength of the sun which teaches us something very important. Many of us are living life from a dim perspective. The shade that we're looking at through the, the lenses of darkness are causing us to miss things that the sun wants to point out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's causing us to miss things that the enemy don't want us to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the issue is the longer you wear shades, the more you wear shades, the more sensitive you become to light. The longer a person wears shades, the more sensitive they become to the light, thus aiding in their blindness. Meaning you can become blinder than what you are. Yes, you already don't see. <laughs> <laughs> but you cannot see more. So the more we keep the lens of darkness over us through worldliness, ungodliness, sinfulness, then we're not going to see the snares and the traps and the pitfalls that the enemy wants to put in our way. Now, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, I really hate going from scripture to scripture, passage to passage. But when you're dealing with doctrinal issues, you have to know how to rightly divide a passage with another passage so you can come with a clear understanding of what an issue is. He says, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Y'all see that? Satan, the dragon, the devil, deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. We see that the text says that the devil, Satan, the serpent, deceives the whole world. 
Satan deceived the whole world with a whole lot of lies. Because remember, sin is simply missing the mark. He cares not that you miss the mark, only that you miss the mark. Now, it ain't about missing it in a wild way. You can miss it a little way. Because the more you miss the mark, the more you further, 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 further deviate from God. Sin is not about you doing the overt, obviously wrong thing. Satan in the kingdom of darkness wants you to indulge, indulge in the covert, seemingly obscure, innocent things. He wants us to miss the mark. Yep. Because if you miss the mark, then he can hit yes. the mark. Yep. To Satan, it matters not the lie you believe, only that you believe the lie. Mm -hmm. Don't care about what lie it is. Just believe it. Right. If you can continue to believe the lie, then you're going to continue to live the lie. Uh -huh. yep. So if it makes you feel good, but it displeases God, he don't care about what it is, just believe it. Uh -huh. He don't care about how it makes you feel, just keep eating. It matters not the lie, only that you believe the lie. It's been said that the, the greatest deception that devil has ever achieved has been to convince the world that he doesn't exist. Yeah. I used to believe that. I did. I used to believe that. I used to be like, hmm, hmm, that's good. Because mm, there's so many people who don't believe me. I now believe that the greatest deception that the devil has ever achieved has been to convince the, the church of a false Jesus. A Jesus who's all love but no justice. A Jesus who's not holy. A Jesus who, who's a compromise in Christ. A, a Jesus who can just save but can't transform. See, I think the greatest deception he's done has not been so much to the world, because we understand he deceived the whole world. But somehow, some way, he's infiltrated the church. Knowing that if we don't stand for the truth of the gospel, we can't have power against him. Now, I'm going back to 2 Corinthians. I'm going back to 2 Corinthians. You see why I want you to read this book? Listen to what 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says. It says, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of background information. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, there's a young man who's having sex with his stepmom. And, and the apostle Paul addressed it. He said, don't put up with this. You got to get rid of him. Which teaches us that if you're not willing to adhere to the standard of the gospel in the church, you need to get out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. See. 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 Deception. What happened is they were allowing it. They were not addressing it. They were not dealing with it. Paul said you got to get rid of him. Well, here in this text, in Second Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven, they dealt with it. They obeyed. They obey, but the young man is now repentant. He's feeling bad. He's, he feels grief, which uh -huh. teaches us that one of the devices of the enemy is grief. Uh -huh. yep. Grief. With grief comes guilt. Uh -huh. With guilt comes condemnation. Wow. With condemnation comes death. Yeah. Uh -huh. With grief comes guilt. With guilt comes condemnation. With condemnation comes death. You may not physically die. But something in you, something important, something valuable, something that is of God is going to die the longer you stay in condemnation because that's Satan's realm. Uh -huh. But the text says, we are not ignorant of his devices. Pay attention. Pay attention. Come on now. I know it's Thanksgiving. Y'all ready to go get something to eat? Pay attention. <laughs> Satan's devices of deception are mind games. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That is Satan's devices of deception are mind games. This comes from the Greek word noema. Noema, noema deals with perception, that is for purpose, your intellect, your, your mind. Uh -huh. It deals with your mind. It's talking about the devices of your mind. Uh -huh. Satan is playing mind games. Yes. He's playing mind games for warfare. Uh -huh. right, right, right. He says we are not ignorant of Satan's mind games of warfare. Right. The, the issue that we've been having is we've been cool with the mind games. We've been comfortable with the mind game, not realizing that there are strategies and devices of deception. Listen to this. Satan's devices aren't just instruments, but implements. They are implements that bleach the mind to stain the soul. Okay, y'all, I'm doing the best I can. I know y'all tired. I'm hearing you. Keep going. They are instruments that he implements to bleach the mind, consequently to stain your soul, so you don't see things that are there. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Yeah
So you are comfortable with that which God is not pleased with. Yes. So you so you start viewing life from a bleached perspective. Wow. And you have a stained soul, so you compromise or affiliate with that which is a part of the kingdom of darkness. And the only thing that can remove the spiritual stains is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only thing that can remove the spiritual stains. Now, the question is, how do I bring my spiritual stains under the blood? Good question, class. I love y'all. That's why I love y'all. <laughs> Number one, by submitting my life to Jesus. If I submit my life to the one who bled for me, then I'm covered by the blood. Yeah. But not only do I submit my life to Jesus, I also submit my issue. What issue in me is stained? I, I submit that to Jesus. So not only am I covered by the blood, my issue is now covered by the blood. But I also submerge myself in prayer. That's why the text says to pray without ceasing. Now, sidebar for y'all who, who don't mind praying because the first service holy. They were like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, pray. <laughs> you also need to be washed. You also need to be prayed for by blood washed believers. Yes. So it's not just yes. you submerging yourself in prayer. You're also allowing other blood washed members of the body of Christ to submerge you in prayer. Yes. Okay, y'all didn't look at <laughs> And lastly, you succumb to the scriptures. Because we have a propensity and a tendency to want to resist what the Bible is telling us to do. I have to learn how to, yes, Lord, to the scriptures. I have to learn how to say, you right, Lord, I'm wrong. We got to learn to stop negotiating with the terrorists. We don't negotiate with terrorists. We have to learn how to succumb, to give in, to yield. To what the word of God is saying about the, about the spirit, about the flesh, about your issue, about this world. And as you do that, God will show you victory. It's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle of the mind, but the war is for the heart. The battle goes on here, but the war is actually for this. Because that's why Mark 12 and 30 says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love God with everything you got, because if there's an area that you don't love the Lord with, can't the darkness go take it. Mm. The kingdom of darkness understands that if they can get to the panel of our minds, then they can get to the channel of our heart. Yes. See, when they have those panels, those platforms of important people getting a chance to sit down and talk with folks, people sit down underneath them and they listen yeah. because they view what they have to say as important and necessary for their life. Yes. That's why it's a panel. Well, the kingdom of darkness wants to have a panel in your life. Yes. Wants to sit down and hold the platform of your thoughts. Yes. Your, your entertainment. Yeah. Right. It wants to sit down and start depositing yeah. its yeah. infection yeah. so it can infect the heart. Yeah. Mm. Uh, help me, Holy Spirit. But how does he do this? How does he do this? Well, let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Remember, it was, a, it was about a fruit. Yeah. It was a fruit. It was something of appetizing, appealing, and alluring, which teaches us that the devices of darkness are disguised as deserts yeah. of light. Devices of darkness are disguised as desserts of light, which is why every good idea ain't a God idea. Yeah. Oh. Every good thing ain't a God thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, quit telling me that you prayed about it. What did God say about it? <laughs> I believe. I believe you prayed. I do. I believe. I prayed. I prayed. I heard. I prayed. I prayed. What did God say? Because y'all don't call me four o'clock in the morning. Like, he. 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 And I'm going to say, he, he, what? <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. he, he uses the world's systems to infiltrate and affect us globally, worldwide, so it can be locally or community-wide. It's a wide array of systems that the enemy uses called the world to infect us locally and communally. Name the entity industry or institution and Satan is doing his best to have his system in it. Yeah. I'll say that again. Name the entity, the industry, or the institution and Satan is doing his best to have a system in it. And if he has a system in it, he wants to keep the system in it. So whatever Satan does to your body, he's truly doing to your mind. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Whatever he does to your marriage, he's actually going to your mind. Whatever he does to your finances, He's actually going to your mind. 
if he does it to your children, if he does it to a school, if he does it to your neighbor, if he do it to your car, he's really doing it to your mind. If he does it to your circumstances, if he does it to your situation, Satan ain't concerned about you as much as he's concerned about your mind. Because if he can take over that mind, the heart gonna come with it. So with, we're not talking about World War I. We're talking about these systems, these spiritual systems and strategies. Let's listen to a few of them. The marriage system. He wants to have a system in the marriage system. Our views in marriage, our views of marriage, our views from marriage. The family system. What family is, what family means, what's family supposed to be like. Uh -huh. The political system, rules and regulations that impact countries, states, etc. School systems, what's taught, how is it taught, who can be taught. Pay attention to this one, all of us, every last one of them. Entertainment system, yeah. movies, music, multimedia, TV, books, novels, shows, and the brand new one, podcasts. The education system, what info is given, and the encouragement of the instructions so they can and follow the, 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 the information that was given. And I'm denoting a difference between education and school because where I come up, there are, there are young men who like to get younger men and have them in the street. So what they do is they educate them with something that's appealing, advertising, and alluring. Uh -huh. Say, so you like the chain? You can get one too. Yeah. Yeah. You like the car? You can have one as well. So they begin to educate them. Yeah. The marketing system, advertising that is both conscious and subconscious. Satan is in the conscious and subconscious system. So when you're driving down the road and you see a, you see a billboard, once you see it, it deposits it in your subconscious. Even if you didn't pay attention to it intentionally. So what the enemy does is he causes us to use these devices. And we're scrolling, scrolling, and our subconscious is eroding and eroding, and he's depositing things that don't belong in him. And now we're wondering where that thought come from. So then you click on stuff that you shouldn't have been clicking on because he's depositing something in you. Kingdom of darkness. Am I talking about the system here? Now the conscious and the subconscious are important because you can intentionally try to do something, but you can unintentionally do something. The subconscious is more important than the conscious because the subconscious is what you would do or be just by reaction. So many of us do things that we don't believe we should be doing or don't think we ought to be doing because it's been deeply rooted in our subconscious. And that's a part of his system. The business system, inequalities, partialities, Collaborations, the community system, gentrification, class systems, caste systems, racial, ethnic systems, conflict, superiority, inferiority, agricultural systems, currency systems, medical systems, pharmaceutical systems, medicines given, the amount given, dosages given. Remember, this comes from the Greek word pharmakia, which means witchcraft or sorcery. Which means that you gotta be careful with the medicine you're taking. Because it can cause Satan to become your slave master. It can cause the enemy to become your landlord. And it'll start doing something to your biological system, your molecular system, your neurological system. So Satan can tell you, whoa, when he want to tell you, whoa. You can say, let's go. And you go. Because you're a puppet to a pharmaceutical. And that means legally and illegally. Now, if you take medicine, pray on your medicine because you don't know who prayed on your medicine. But I'm talking to those who do so and those who do it illegally. Because all you are becoming is Satan's puppet. And puppets don't speak for themselves. Puppets don't speak for themselves. They ain't got a mouth of their own. The religious system. Who to worship, how to worship. Remember, idolatry is not just the worship of a false god, but worshiping the true God falsely. Yes. All he wants you to do is miss the mark. Because if you can worship the true God falsely, then that means that he's corrupted your religious system. Uh -huh. So I talked about when man lost authority in Genesis. Second Corinthians, we see that because man lost authority in Genesis, we see that Satan is now the God of his age. Yep. And now we're now seeing that he uses devices of deception, mm -hmm. which are mind games, for warfare. 
But now let's see in Romans 12 and 2 how we can renew our mind to fight. Uh -huh. yeah. Say, so don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the Okay, let me, I'm, I'm going to make it a little bit more uh, infectious. First service was on it. <laughs> first, man, first, y'all should have been there. First service, I ain't have, I ain't have to read the Bible. I could just rant. They would say, you know. <laughs> do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the, of your mind. by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't be conformed to this world system. This word for conform in Greek means don't fashion yourself behind the world. Don't, 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 don't look like the world. Don't talk like the world. Don't walk like the world. Don't emote like the world. Don't think like the world. Don't feel like the world. You are in the world. You're not of the world. Don't dress yourself with the world. Because this world is trying to brand you. This world is trying to brand you. I have I have brothers and, and little brothers and friends who were part of the Q dogs. You Jesus. know, come on, come on. Barking on you, barking, stomping, Tim dog, yelling. But my disappointment came when they let them brand them. Yeah. Because branding means I possess you. The world is trying to brand you. He said, don't be conformed to this brand. See, every one of us are wearing something that's showing the brand. Because branding is a kingdom advertisement. You are advertising your kingdom. If you are of this world, you are advertising the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is your system. It is your entity. You are a part of darkness. You've been branded. He says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be branded by this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing our minds help us to prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So I'm going to explain how to renew your mind by explaining how not to renew your mind. Yes. You don't renew your mind by doing the same thing you've been doing. Yes. Amen! Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Amen. <laughs> you don't renew your mind by continuing to listen to secular music. You don't renew your mind by continuing to participate in ungodly activity. You don't renew your mind by continuing to intake ungodly content. You don't renew your mind by not obeying 1 Corinthians 15 33, where it says bad company corrupt good character. Amen! If you continue to spend time with bad company, you are not going to be able to renew your mind. So instead, what you do to renew your mind is I'm not going to listen to that mess anymore. I'm going to start listening to gospel music. I'm not going to spend ungodly time on the cell phone. I'm going to start reading my word. I'm going to get tired, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to continue to go to areas. Avenues with people that I know don't have a heart for God. Yeah. I'm going to start separating myself and finding people yeah. who actually love the Lord their God yeah. with all their heart, yeah. with all their soul, yeah. with all their mind, yeah. with all their strength. Yeah. Are y'all listening yeah. to what the Spirit is saying to the church? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So you renew your mind by not rehearsing your old world ways. Yeah. Amen. Let it go. Just let it go. Which teaches us. That renewing your mind is intentional. Yes. Yes, renewing your mind is intentional. I intentionally renew my mind. Yes. I intentionally read the word. Yes. I intentionally come to the house of God. Yes. I, I intentionally stop messing with you. Yes. I intentionally ab obey and avoid all those things that don't please God. I intentionally do what God wants me to do yes. and fight what my flesh wants me to do. Yes. Renewing your mind is intentional. It's not accidental. It's not coincidental. You don't just wake up. Oh, my, uh -huh. <laughs> my mind is renewed. 
No, it's an action of intent. In other words, the mind says, I'm going to please you, God, and not me, self. I'm going to please God and not flesh. I am intentional with renewing my mind. This is important because 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 and 15 says that Satan and his ministers can transform themselves into angels of light. And a renewed mind will bless you with the ability to see him and them before they come. Will bless you to see him and them when they come. As well as to see him, them, and the devices that they bring as they come. But without a renewed mind, you don't see it. Therefore, you become susceptible to it. Satan can masquerade, but he can't master. Yeah, he, he can come in a form. But he can't stay in that form. Yeah. Yeah. But when you don't have a renewed mind, you start engaging in that which looks like the love of God. Wow. And I realize that by the time he unveils himself, yep. he got you trapped. Yes. That's why it's called stronghold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can see Satan's mind games in the world clearer with a renewed mind. Yes. Clearer with a renewed mind. Which takes me now to 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, uh, 15 through 17. I want to highlight verse 16, though. It says, Do not love the world or the things in this world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the world, not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away. The world is dying. And the lust of it, dying with it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. You show you love the world by loving the things in the world. How do you respond to worldly things? I know some of us lie to ourselves, talking about, I don't love the world, I just like it a lot. <laughs> Yet you will miss church to do something that's worldly. <laughs> you, I, 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 they don't got a hold on me. I just, I just like things. And then when things don't go your way, we can't, we can't find you. <laughs> And we say stuff like, uh, God know my heart. Jesus. And he do. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Thank God for verse 10. I, the Lord. No, I know it. You can lie to everybody else. You can't lie to him. Because all that's in this world, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of the life, say it ain't the Father. And if you love it, you don't love him. Right. Which is why James 4 and 4 is so important. It says friendship with the world is enmity against God. In other words, you make yourself a hateful, hostile enemy against God. Yes. When you're friends with this world. Wow. Mm. A clear indicator of your love for God will be seen in how you love the world. In other words, when people see you, can they see your love for God or the world? Come on. Mm. No. No. When, when when you examine and analyze your life, is it godly or worldly? This is why you must be honest with yourself as you deal with the honesty and the integrity of the text. So here's the question. Here's the question. How do I combat the world's lust? Great question. Man, I love y'all, man. I'm going to give all y'all an eight. Well, we see that if it says the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, if we want to know how to com combat that, we got to learn how to pull that sock inside out. So instead of me having the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, I desire an appetite for the spirit. Yes. Instead of me dealing with the lust of my eyes, I have a readiness to hear God's word. Yes. Instead of me dealing with the pride of life, I have humbleness of life in Christ. Yes. In other words, I'm going to renew my mind by doing things that Christ approves of. Therefore, my lust is deleted, but my desire is increased. Because yes. lust, lust just sound provocative. <laughs> it is lust. <laughs> now we gotta take a bath now. But desire, God don't want us to lust after Him. He wants us to desire Him. That's why I say, Seek me while I can be found. Yeah. Call upon me while I'm there. Yeah. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Yeah. Seek the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Seek after Him. He said, You will search for me and find me after you've done so with all your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is a desire issue. Yeah. Hallelujah. But it's hard to cast out what you're cool with. It's hard to cast out what you're cool with. It's hard to kick out what you're comfortable with. See, that's the system. 
The system is designed by Satan and the kingdom of darkness to infiltrate you so when it's time to get rid of it, you can't. Uh -huh. yeah. So now you can't. Oh. Yeah. Now you compromise. Talk about it. Let me see, Lord. Um, well, God, you know. It, it ain't that bad. God, you know that um, it's, I, I can handle it. I, I'm not. I don't need it. I just want it right now. Yeah. Jesus says a little leaven leavens a whole lot. Okay. Y all, y all, that, that's too deep. How about we just get real practical? If your eye calls you to sin, cut it out. If your hand calls you to sin, cut it off. Now, thank God he didn't mean literally because all of us be nubs. <laughs> if the world is Satan's system and society, then the kingdom system is the savior's solution for society. The kingdom solution is the only solution for the world's for the world's problems. This is why we, as the church, are the antidote, are the answer, are the last bastion of hope against Satan's kingdom in this world. And then when we compromise our light for shade, we are actually doing the kingdom of light of this service and giving more warriors and soldiers to the kingdom of darkness. Choose the line and stand on it. So, I've oftentimes had, and mainly my sisters, women that is, that say, uh, I don't know why I attract these type of people. I don't know. No. I, don't, I don't know why. I, they, they just keep coming to me. I don't know why I attract these type of people. <laughs> Listen to this. Both light and feces attract flies and gnats. Both light and feces attract gnats and flies. <laughs> they come and go for different reasons. They come and stay for different reasons. Gnats are attracted to light because of the natural behavior called positive phototaxis, which means they respond to light by moving towards it. Well, they, they come for, for different reasons. Some of them come because of confusion. Uh, they, they like to believe that the artificial lights or moons or celestial bodies that they use for navigation. So sometimes they come to us because of the light that we present. Yeah. Yeah. So they see the light and they want to be a part of the light. Yeah. Other times they come for heat. They try to warm themselves in the light's heat. In other words, some of them are coming for comfort because of the light that we possess. No, <laughs> yeah. But they also come because they're trying to escape. They make the light may signal an escape from predators or obstacles. In other words, they see us as ways out of their situation. But flies, I'm talking about gnats, but flies. Flies are attracted to feces because it provides a readily available source of food and a suitable place to lay eggs. Uh, just in case you didn't catch that, I'm going to say it again. <laughs> flies come because they can get something from you and put something in you. <laughs> flies come because you got what they need and you can take what they give. <laughs> Kingdom of darkness. Flies come not because you just stink. <laughs> But because they can impregnate you after they eat off you. Oh. Depending on your kingdom, what you attract will be revealed and what becomes attached. Check this out. Because flies and gnats can't do nothing to the light. They can come to the light, but they can't leave nothing on the light. They can fly home on the light, uh -huh. but they can't impregnate the light. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. All right. uh. But with feces, uh -huh. it's used as an incubator mm -hmm. to replicate more kingdom of darkness. Right. So therefore, we allow the world system to be generated in us, and we start generating kingdom of darkness in, uh, in the world, and then people who look up to us become like us. Right. Because we've been impregnated by 
the flies. So the last thing I'm going to say is this. I'm about to sit down and shut up. Keep going. I'll stay in that shower. I'll stay in that shower. Hey, hey, guess, guess what book I'm about to go back to? Second Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 10, verse 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yes. but mighty in God. To the pulling down of, oh. casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every noema, every device yes. to captivity, to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all oh. disobedience when yeah. your, your obedience. if your mind is not dedicated to being renewed then you cannot punish disobedience for your disobedience. Uh -huh. right. And that's what Satan has been doing through these systems. He's lulled us to sleep, infiltrated us, impregnated us, and now we're walking around with his seed like we're his baby mama. Yep. Talk about it. Not only do kingdom of light soldiers renew their minds, but weaponize their minds. And the only way we can win in this kingdom of light versus kingdom of darkness battle is if we adhere to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now pray y'all for